What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a market update, what happened today on the 7th of December in 2018, and we're also going to be talking about two trades that I made today as well. But before we do get into the topic of today's video, for all of you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and 320 plus other investors and traders, I highly suggest you join that Discord group chat, guys. We're talking about trading, investing, you know, networking with each other, talking strategies, stocks, news, pretty much all day every single day. So again, all of those are linked down below in the description box, and I highly suggest you guys get into that Discord group chat if you guys want to be a part of the community on a different platform because we're all super, super active in there and super helpful. I just love the way, you know, the whole group chat is panning out. It's absolutely phenomenal. So, you know, let's talk about what happened today on the 7th, Friday, December 2018 in the overall stock market market. We do see here, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about Apple. Um, you know, we do see Apple fell into the $160 price range right now, which is absolutely crazy. In my personal opinion, guys, it's down almost 30. Dude, oh my God, it's down about 35. What is that? About 35% from the peak at $233. So that's super interesting in my personal opinion. I've been building my position in Apple over the past year and a half. So, you know, I'm viewing this as a buying opportunity. But before we do get into that, Let's just take a look at what happened today in the overall stock market. So let's just take a closer look here at the Dow Jones on the 180-day four-hour chart. So we notice, guys, you know, the Dow Jones's pattern is telling us a story. It's telling us, you know, this this uh, this index is making lower highs, right? It's making lower highs here and here, and it's pretty much trading in this little, uh, you know, from this support at about 24500 up to about $26,200. And today, guys, we saw <clears throat> a 560-day red day in the Dow Jones, <clears throat> down about 2.24% on the day. And if we take a little bit of a closer look on this one-day, one-minute, guys, you know, we pretty much erased all of those gains that we saw in the rally from yesterday. So for those of you guys that have been not that have not been paying attention to the overall markets recently, let's just take a look at this five day, five minutes. So you know we saw the big sell off from here at about twenty five eight, right, all the way down to twenty four two hundred uh, yesterday, and then we saw a huge rally in terms of the Dow and the overall markets. You know from midday yesterday up to the close yesterday. Literally, the Dow rallied about 700 points from this low to the close of the day, and we pretty much got rejected by this 180-day simple moving average on this five-day chart. You know, in the morning as we opened up at around $25,000, and from there, you know, we pretty much erased all of our gains down to about $24,300, which is, you know, acting as a support level, I would say, as of now for the Dow Jones. So, you know, a lot of these market ETFs were flying today, guys. I know TVIX was absolutely on, on fire today. It was going bananas. Um, you know, a bunch of these other inverse ETFs that I'm going to talk about were going absolutely crazy as well. And, you know, what to wait for in terms of Monday, guys? Let's take a look at this 180 again. So we noticed that the Dow is by that support again at about $24,400, $24,500 pretty much right around here where this trend line is at. So I would wait and see if we do break below this guys because if we do, that is going to be the uh, you know, the the uh the confirming factor that we're officially on a downtrend or we're pretty much resuming the downtrend because 
you know, we've been talking about how the Dow has been holding above here 24,500 and holding above here at about 26,200. And although it's been making lower highs, it hasn't really been making lower lows because it's been holding this support. So if we do break below here, that's going to be the lower low that the lower low that we need to really confirm the downtrend and really just, you know, analyze and see that the that the Dow Jones is you know, fully downtrending in price. So what we're going to see, guys, in terms of my personal opinion, is we might see a little green day, you know, next week, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we might push back down and then break below that support. And, you know, we can also open up on Monday red again, which is going to put us right under that support, breaking that support <clears throat> and pretty much continuing that downtrending pattern. And if we break below here, guys, like I said, that lower low is going to be made. And, you know, that's going to be not too good of a sign for the Dow Jones. And if we take a look here at the S&P 500, guys, we're at a support at about 26 30 very similar pattern to the Dow Jones we're holding that support pretty much heading into the close today so what I'm going to be waiting for on Monday is I want to see if we're going to break this support and then start to make a lower low to continue the downtrend for the overall S&P 500 but you know we've talked about this in previous videos the S&P is more of in a, in a horizontal pattern in my personal opinion from what I can draw out from these technicals more than you know the Dow Jones so you know but they're both in the same uh they're, they're they're both in the same situation where if they do break below their supports the downtrend is going to continue since that is a lower low pattern formation for the two indexes so overall today S&P down about $63 down about 2.3 percent so the NASDAQ guys got absolutely hammered today so we got rejected by the 180 simple moving average that we originally broke above which was initially a good sign but the fact that we broke below it now you know we got rejected below it again and we had a very strong nearly three percent red day on the nasdaq you know all signs are pointing now that the nasdaq <clears throat> is going to continue to push down and this is mostly because again apple guys is down about 35 percent from 230 dollars the peak that we saw a couple months ago and Apple has a huge weight on the Nasdaq and a huge weight on the entire stock market since it is one of the biggest companies out there and since they've been performing very poorly on you know in terms of their stock right this is dragging down the stock market, dragging down the NASDAQ, and I do see some further downside, you know, 100% downside in my personal opinion, you know, for the NASDAQ and the overall markets, just judging off of a technical perspective. And of course, we have all the China trade, trade war news, you know, the tariffs, Trump. Trump, China, the interest rates, you know, bonds, all of these different things, you know, are really pointing towards economic downturn right now. You know, the growth rates are slowing in companies. A lot of things are going on right now. There's a lot of uncertainty out there, and I talk about this a lot. The stock market, people in general, they do not like uncertainty. They like to know, okay, there's no trade war. There is no, uh, you know, uh, problems with Trump and other countries. You know, there's nothing uh, in terms of signaling weakness in the economy like the bonds could be right now. And, you know, that's what the market likes. And right now we're not in that state. And, uh, you know, that's why I think there's going to be a lot more downside in my personal opinion. So now that we looked at that, let's just briefly talk about what trades I made today. The number one trade I made today was in ticker symbol DR. IP and this was actually a pretty big trade for me and I was calling this one out in the group chat really early on today when it was at around $10 I believe it was at about like $10 and 30 40 cents roughly when I started to follow it and actually before I took this drip trade I was actually in gush which I ended up taking a very small loss on literally like a 1% loss and I'm going to show you guys where I ended up getting into gush and where I ended up just cutting my losses very quickly before hopping into drip and then making about six, seven percent on my drip position. So the fact that we opened up here at about 1530 in terms of gush, sold off all the way here 
to $14.88, and then we popped up above this 50 SMA and then the uh, EMA line. Eventually, that really gave me, you know, the sign that Gush could potentially be reversing here, and I kind of jumped the gun because I got in once we broke, up, you know, broke above this resistance. I thought this was a little uh, good entry point right here. I believe I got in at about like $15.60. I really got in a little late. This was my mistake, guys, and you know, I make mistakes all the time i'm not really afraid or ashamed to admit it because we can learn from my mistakes and that is the reason why i made a uh, mistakes channel in the discord chat so we can all share our mistakes this one was one of my mistakes so i kind of got in a little bit late on this gush trade right we could see the rsi was a little bit overbought i kind of had a case of fear of missing out on this one guys because i saw it was running up at this point the markets were actually green i think the dow was up about 130 points you know the s p was turning a green green note there and uh, nasdaq was turning green and, you know, I took a little trade here at about 1560. We popped up here, ended up popping below here. And, uh, you know, I ended up cutting my losses at about 1%. Literally, a very small loss. It didn't even have time to hit my stop loss because I cut my losses on myself before it hit the stop loss. So, took the loss there. And then I went over to drip. And I actually ended up getting into drip at about $10.72. So, you know, we saw the big sell-off in drip as Gush was pushing up early on. Saw the consolidation here. And really what made me want to get into drip was once we broke above this 50 SMA, we started to push up pretty strong. So I actually took my position here in drip at about 1072 and from 1072 I actually wrote it up all the way to about $11.27 and again guys just like my previous drip trade, I left a pretty big chunk of profit on the board, right? But I'm always that type of person that locks in their profits. I don't get too greedy and I try to aim for my 3 to 5% goal. And, you know, from 1072 up to 1127, let's see how much, uh, you know, percent I made on this trade. I believe it was about 6 or 5. Okay, it was about 5%. From 1072 up to about 1027, that's literally the exact price that I got in and that I sold that. So that's 5% right there, and I took a 1% loss on Gush. So total for the day in terms of my trading was about 4%, but from 1127, guys, you know, I lost about another 7% on top of that, right? It was about 7% that I missed on. But, you know, the whole name of the game, guys, is not being too greedy and trying to get as much profit as possible. Because if that's what you're like, let's say you're up 5% already on a position, which I was, right? I could have held. But, you know, let's say instead of popping up like it did here, which does happen a decent amount of times, right? Let's say we popped up 5%. And I was being a little greedy and then we sold off and I lost my profits <clears throat> or maybe even took a one to two percent profit that would suck because at one point I had that five percent I could have locked it in I could have hit my daily goal but I decided to be greedy which led me to only taking a one to two percent profit because I didn't lock it in at the top so you know we broke above this 180 simple moving average guys we pulled back on it bounced on it and then pretty much once we started to push back up, that's just when I took my profits here to be safe at 5%. And then, you know, the market sold off pretty heavily after that. We saw TVIX fly up. We saw the Dow was down about 700 points again at one point. And typically when the markets are selling off heavily, drip does well. So, you know, drip did very well. It closed the day at $12, guys. That's literally like a 15% turnaround in terms of the low of the day here all the way to the top. So I was able to grab, you know, 5% of that 15, <clears throat> excuse me, that it was able to run. And I'm happy with that, guys, because again, my goal is 3 to 5%, hit 4% on the day. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it 
for my trading. So, so another one that obviously did very well today was TVIX. And I actually was not able to trade this one today because, you know, pretty much after I traded Drip, I stopped trading for the day. I pretty much closed my computer, but I was still on my phone, you know, checking the markets on my Yahoo Finance app, on my uh, the street app. And I was also talking on, on, in the group chat as well. And, you know, I saw the market sell off heavily and, you know, TVIX was popping up and I was tempted guys I'm telling you I was super tempted to hop into TVIX but I didn't want to get in since the markets were already down you know 500 points in terms of the Dow you know TVIX was already up about 10 percent at that point and you know whenever the markets are up or down like that and TVIX is up I always get tempted but I always tell myself Stas you made your money for the day you hit your goal don't do it, don't do it, and you know, that's something that a bunch of people battle with, right, you know, they, they, they made their profits for the day, but they're seeing other opportunities, and they, they get tempted to hop in, but you know, if stocks or ETFs are already up 10% on the day, you know, be careful before you do hop in, because you could see a big turnaround if it's already up 10%, and you're getting that fear of missing out, the FOMO feeling, you know, just be careful about that, guys, because I almost did that. I almost did it. But, you know, let's say I did hop in, you know, this one occasion. I would have made money, but it doesn't always happen that way. So I just sat on the sidelines. I just saw I watched TVIX pretty much run up. And, uh, you know, I just sat on my profits from drip on the day. So TVIX, massive runner today. You guys actually did very well as well. 10%. I was not able to trade this one. A bunch of people in our group did well on you guys so shout out to you if you did do well on you guys you know the the report came out today it was positive for you guys and you know it's showing a little bullish sign right now in my personal opinion and uh you know I'm going to be watching you guys very closely for next week, especially since the weather is supposed to be getting very, very, very cold. We're supposed to be getting a cold front here in the East Coast. I don't know where you guys are at, but, you know, for those on the East Coast, you better bundle up because, you know, it's going to get cold. So that is what I pretty much did today, guys, in terms of trading. Oh, you know, oh, yeah, I want to talk about this. Did you guys see what happened with Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N? I made a little clickbaity video a couple of days ago talking about how Altria was going to buy out Cron. And they actually ended up buying about 45% of that company. I think the investment was $2.5 billion into Cron, which shot up the stock like crazy pre-market hours. It was up to like $14. I think it was up 40% from the close yesterday. Yep, $14.88 pretty much consolidated for the rest of the day. I was actually watching Cron pretty closely because I wanted to see if we were able to, you know, sell off and bounce on this 180 and potentially test that previous high since, you know, we do look for stocks that pull back and have a pre-market high because that opens up a margin for profit. But, you know, it didn't end up bouncing. It ended up holding for the rest of the day. And uh, pretty interesting stuff here, guys. We can see it here on the live news, I'm sure. Yep, here it is. $2.4 billion, right? I think it was about 45%. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you got yep, there it is. 45% stake in cannabis company for 2.4 billion dollars. So that's pretty crazy, guys. Check it out. Do more research on that. But you know, a big tobacco name coming into the weed game, the marijuana game. That's a pretty big move, in my personal opinion. That's pretty big news. And for those of you guys that support marijuana stocks. I would be very happy you know, if I were you, and I'm personally happy because I do see a bright future for the marijuana industry and the marijuana stocks, and I'm, I'm just really happy for this, right? So, you know, I don't want to keep this video too long. I'm going to end up ending it off right here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm uploading a video in the morning on my strategy for the next stock market crash, briefly going over that strategy, so keep an eye on that video. It's coming out about 10 a.m., Eastern Standard Time. So I'll catch you guys in that next video. I hope you all had a great trading day today and a great trading week. Have a great weekend. Peace out. Have a good one. I'll catch you in the next video.